rear half of the car. And then that frame comes up. I tack welded the brake bracket onto it. That was interesting running all the brake lines, rerunning re them. So the, the foam keeps them from vibrating. Uh, that's the air breather hose. And that keeps that from vibrating and getting on any edges. That, that was cleaned up so it's not sharp. And then it's zip tied there and that's my little inspection wear and tear point basically. If that breaks from aging that lets me know that uh, I need to do more of a thorough inspection on it. And the wear and tear on like the, the clamp and the rubber that lets me know the tension of the pressure and time and the elements. And that's an aftermarket commercial steel core hose. And it's got drums on it, so there's no way to inspect those without taking the tire off. And yeah, see, there's plenty of fluid. And this is like the last bit of fluid that's left in it. I mean, this thing's dried up of all of its, I think it's hydraulic fluid in a shock. So that's the all wheel drive setup. And. I'm pretty sure this one doesn't have an anti sway bar. I might be wrong. It, it may, it may have it. Yeah, it's got the anti sway bar on it. So, and that's the lift adapters for there. Uh, that one on the outside is actually welded to the body because I caught a curb and a fast food. entryway during winter time there's enough impact that uh, it ripped the interior nut out of the body so that one I had to weld and I haven't I didn't clean it up very good but it was winter time so and all this was cut out everything in that L angle was cut out of the original body and was able to put that dual exhaust in there. But I got to get two of them in there because it is pretty loud, especially on acceleration. Uh, it looks like I got some spots that I need to chip away at and primer at least to protect it. Mm -hmm. There was before it had any lift, that was just out in uh, sage brush, brush, and that it would do that much damage to the paint. And that's where the stepson, ex-stepson, kicked it. And that was the other place he kicked it, but it only broke two of the grommets, the retainer clips. So, yeah, I got, looks like a door, both doors, that I got to definitely get prepped up. And I didn't worry about any of this because it's all temporary. I didn't put anything between the two layers because uh, I hadn't decided on a, a fi final finish bond to put on it so and that was loose enough where I can't I think it's got an angle piece on it if I remember correctly and it's just in a, a U shape the way it's all designed so I had a lot of flex in it so I put some foam in it just to stabilize it and it's secured it 
it's amazing how it holds. So with the four inch lift on it, I did have to slide that knuckle down on the lower part of the steer wheel splines. So it's on there for about a half an inch. So definitely pushing it, but I, I haven't had any binding in it. And that was the biggest thing I was concerned about. Let's see. This is the last that I left off to get to the skid plate. So now I'll bring that up and protect from catching rocks. The lower radiator hose, that's aftermarket. That's from the four inch lift. Outside that, everything else fell back into place. Uh, the front struts are original, but the rear struts are 2000, a 2000 Subaru Outback. Uh, and the adapter plates, and that's kind of hard to see. So literally gutting out this top assembly and following the rivets is how I gutted the 2000 Outback to make me the adapters. So and that's the access to the, the bearings and it looks like uh, A little dry it up, the gear oil. Or I shouldn't say it's not gear oil, but it's uh, grease, bearing grease. So I need to get some packed in there. Got a little bit of play, so now that I know that I basically got a lot that I got to replace. But with the adapters, uh, yeah, I'm certain all that's separate but I don't have to worry about it on the top side of this because this is where the strut bolt would connect so and you see it's not here this is just this part's irrelevant I mean I could gut all that it wouldn't cause, cause a problem because it's actually mounted to that one there so there's no accessing that actually having to probably cut around the side to take this out. I've never messed with it. But you can slightly see the head of the nut down in there. So I could probably get a, depending on how big that bearing is, I assume it's probably the whole piece, majority of it, if not more, I don't know, it's, it feels pretty hard there, so it's probably mounted in there. So I'll probably have to cut in here, probably maybe even at an angle to get that out of there to be able to access that, because I should be able to access it. But since I've installed it and had them on there for probably well over, I don't know, it's a hard guess, maybe 60,000 miles, I haven't had any problems except for blowing the rear struts. Uh, when they do the alignment on it, uh, it gets right near to its max capabilities. Uh, it doesn't need any additional shims or anything like that, so I got lucky all that. Uh, came out good. I think that's, for the most part, that's the major changes or inspection information for the vehicle.